Hi everyone, Dawn here and welcome to DMF Stop. Today I will be giving you guys some tips and guidance about the Lemitberg Nature Reserve, specifically the Rock Hopper Trail. There is chapters in the timeline below and also in the description of the video. So you guys can just follow the link if you want to see something specifically about the video. Please also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more of the hiking videos in the future. So let's jump in. The Rock Hopper Trail is located in the Bainscliffe Pass near Wellington, which is about 90 kilometers away from the city of Cape Town. The route follows the Witte Refier all the way from Eersetal to Tweedertal. Making a booking for this trail is mandatory and you can do this through Cape Nature who manages various nature reserves within the Western Cape. The contact details for Cape Nature will be in the description below and we'll also keep it updated if it ever changes in the future. To gain access to the route, you need a code for the lock on the gate entering the nature reserve and this can be obtained through either the Cape Nature Reservation if they send it to you in time or otherwise you can go down to Twitter Tall at the nature reserve there and ask them for the code before you head up to Eerste Tall where the hike would begin. The Rock Hopper Trail is a linear trail which means it starts at one point and ends at another point. So I would suggest you take two vehicles, leave the one at the end and then go to the beginning. Otherwise you would have to hike all the way up the pass again after you've finished the trail. The route can be hiked from either side, but I would suggest you start at Eersetal and then head to Tweedertal since Eersetal is on the top of the mountain and you would be walking along the river in the flow direction heading downwards instead of upwards. You can stop at almost any point along the route to take a snack or a break, but by far the most significant stop along the route would be the hole in the roof waterfall. More on this later. For this hike you definitely need appropriate apparel. Since you are hiking all along the river, I would suggest you take clothes that can get wet and that is comfortable for hiking. Also shoes that can get wet and has decent grip and definitely also take a hat. I would also suggest you take enough food and something to drink for the route, take enough snacks to keep your energy up, take some food with for lunchtime, coffee if you want. I would say the water is clean enough if you want to drink that and use it for coffee, but don't take my words for it. Definitely make sure you have enough water and something to drink along the way so you don't get dehydrated. Some essentials you might need along the way. I would recommend you put on sunblock since you will be outside all day and there aren't really trees that you can sit under in the shade. Also take a towel with or after you've had a swim. I would also suggest you take a waterproof bag or a pouch for sensitive items like cell phones to put that in since you are hiking all along the river and things may get wet. There's also no cell phone reception so if you want a map or something download it or print it. Then I would also suggest you take a basic first aid kit, a pocket knife and a torch for in case it gets late. This trail is very difficult. We hike regularly and this is one of the most difficult hikes we've done. There is no trail on this route so to speak since you are hopping from rock to rock as the name cleverly describes. Cape Nature states the route to be 8 kilometers long but since you crisscross the river many times and hop from rock to rock it ends up being more like 11 kilometers. They also give an estimated time of 6 hours for the hike although I would say it would be more like 8 hours especially if you stop along the route and eat something and also if you go to the Holden Roof waterfall. I would recommend you do this hike in the summertime on a nice clear day. When the rocks get wet from the river level rising or from some rain, it can get very slippery and dangerous. In the winter time the river can also come down quite a bit which would make crossing the river very difficult or impossible even. So I would definitely not recommend you go on this hike after some heavy rain. The best part about this hike and the reason we went on the hike is because of the hole in the roof waterfall. It is a beautiful waterfall falling from about 20 meters high into a hole that leads into a cave. This is not something you would get to see on many or any hikes in Cape Town or even the world. To get to the hole in the roof waterfall 
you would hike about six of the eight kilometers of this trail until you get a stream that would converge into the Vitter River. There you follow this stream up about 500 meters until you reach the hole in the roof waterfall. I would say this adds about an hour to your hike, but it is definitely worth seeing. This is an amazing trail to hike with lots of pools you can swim in and also beautiful rock formations. Being able to hike to the hole in the roof waterfall is just an added bonus. I could definitely recommend this hike to anyone who loves the outdoors, although you need to take your fitness level into account when going on this hike. I want to thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop a like on the video to support the channel. If you found the video informative or helpful, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notifications whenever we upload new content. Also, please comment your thoughts down below in the comment sections and let me know if you've liked this trail, what you thought about it. And then I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers!